right, welcome back, vlog number four. Sorry, vlog number three kind of sucked. We had a lot of weird footage to scrub through, a lot kind of going on. We didn't really know the best way to chop it up, put it in there. We we're just kind of sharing the information as it came. Boy Geo came out from Anatol to basically set up the press, teach us how to use it or how to operate it and stuff. There was a lot of stuff that we had to figure out. So we've been spending the last three weeks really just trying to dial it in. Um, we got the GoCo Pro and the Volt at the same time. So we really had to learn how to do both simultaneously and when we we're having an issue we didn't know if it was the press or if it was the screens or whatever it was so we got it figured out um the goko pro is a learning curve um when you think about traditionally making screens you know coding with emulsion printing out a film exposing it rinsing it out all that stuff it's done differently especially the way that you print onto the screen from your computer. So typically I would separate my artwork in Adobe Illustrator or Photoshop, um, but I would just have a layer for each different separation in Illustrator. And I was having issues, like it was not printing right. Um, the homies over at Express Screen, Jay, you're the man. Um, they got me dialed all in, I had, you know, you got to set up the settings specifically for each frame, um, what type of printing that you're doing. Also, the size really matters. We kept having error issues and jam ups and then other issues. And, and it was because it had backlogged artwork basically in the printer, like basically in a queue memory in the printer. And it kept printing the same thing over and over and it was printing it wrong. and we got that dialed in, so we've been a little slow, kind of not taking on any jobs just because we needed to figure things out. So now we got figured out, we're ramping it up. We got a little bit to do today. We got a three color front, two color back on some lime green shirts. But what I'm gonna do in this video is we're gonna show you guys how I set up the artwork, how I print the films, stretch the films, basically a more in-depth little bit of information on the GoCo Pro than when it comes to setting it up on the press. Um, not saying that I'm doing everything 100% right or the way that it was designed to do it. It's just what we found that works. We don't really have the time to just, you know, really dive in and dive in and dive in. That's like, we found something that works. We're going to use that and we'll grow from there as time goes on. So right now we do use a shitload of tape. Not, not going to lie. We tape up everything around the artwork. And is that right? I don't know. Some people say they don't. Some people do. We're using the hardener. We're basically adding all these extra steps into it just to ensure that we don't have screw ups because we do print a lot of weird different things, you know, a lot of youth and adult. And when you put that a uh, that youth pal or shirt onto the palette to print. Yeah, maybe you got it to the right the the neck collar down to the right spot on the platen to print properly, but then you have these sleeve seams, right? Well, those sleeve seams add more pressure onto the screen when you're going. So what happens when you have more pressure onto it than than regular? Well, you're going to get pinholes down the seams. So that's one thing we were having a lot of issues with was why are we getting ink on our seams out here? Well, we were breaking through everything because we had so much pressure. We also weren't using this stuff called Express Magic. And what this stuff does is we got it now and it's, it's killer. So basically when your thermal head melts off that plastic stuff, that's the coating on the bottom of the screen, what happens when you melt off plastic? it doesn't just evaporate and go to nowhere, right? It just gets smaller and tightens up. Well, that plastic stuff is clogging the screens. Basically think of it like if you're printing water-based ink and you didn't flood your screen every time or you left it on there open for a while, right? Your screen's gonna clog up, you need to unclog that. It's similar thing to this. So when we put a 
on press, yeah, it all looks like it's burnt out and everything, right? But we're like, we're not clearing the screens that great. So we're cranking up the pressure to get it to clear. And it's still not clearing 100%, but we're like, fuck it, it's good enough. Which it's not good enough. What this Express Magic stuff does is it's it's some sort of chemical thing, reaction. I don't know what the fuck it is. It's science. But you take it and you rub it on the screen, right? And then you basically neutralize it with water afterwards. And what it does is it gets all that melted plastic that's clogging the screen off. So now you have a 100% clean screen. So now once we figured that out, now our pressures went down in order to clear the screen. We have smoother prints, clean prints. So it was, a, it was actually a game changer. This is stuff that people didn't tell me. Also, we got from them over there, we got some thermal paper. So basically you tape this paper onto the bottom of the screen and you can do a test print on that. So it's not gonna affect the screen, but it's gonna print that image onto that thermal paper, basically like a big fax machine. And it's gonna give you what that printout's gonna look like just to make sure that, you know, maybe your half tones are separated right or whatever. You, you did your job right. That's basically all it is. But then at the second, at, secondly from that, you also get a piece of paper that you could tape down to your platen to line your screens up to, which I really only do for like the first screen, right? Just to make sure that it's in the right place. But I also marked up a palette so I know where the artwork goes. I know everything. We have an artboard set up for where we place everything. And so we, we don't really need that aspect, but it, it's great when it costs you $9 in mesh to make a screen and you don't know if it's going to work out right. So this saves you ruining that $9 worth of mesh. Um, we've raised, wasted probably about two rolls of mesh since we got this thing, just trying to figure it out. And that mesh ain't cheap, bro. Let me tell you. But anyways, so we're going to show you guys basically how we set up our artboards to print through it. The settings, we're using a Mac. We did move our printer from like a screen making room into my office to plug straight into my Mac. We were using a Windows laptop. I don't know Windows, I was confused, I was screwing things up, and so we eliminated that process. We just moved it into my office, plugged it into my Mac so I can do things the way I know how to do it. So you're gonna see things a little bit differently, but hopefully this vlog shares some insight with you guys on what we got going on, what we're doing, and you can learn something, enjoy it, try to make it entertaining, crack some jokes. Hopefully you have a sense of humor and hopefully you like to make money. Let's go get it. All right. So what we did was this artboard is the size of basically the printing area on the Riso frames that we have. Now we put this blue box that is our platen size. And then we also have this little blue box right here, which that is <clears throat> basically the best thing that we could come up with to place left chests. Um, so it's five and a half inches down, four and a half inches over, and that's where our placement would be. So this is going to be our front. And so this is where it gets a little different than your normal way of making a screen so we're going to do this is going to be it's going to size it already enter oh, make sure it scales proportionately for okay so now we're going to place this to where our center is going to be on the edge of that line and we're going to be up about right there is where I'm going to split the difference. So now we're going to delete this box. And we're going to go to, actually, let's not. Let's leave it on just to show you guys. We're also going to take these registration marks. We're going to put them right there. 
and right here. And then the best way that I found to do it is I just center them. Boom, there we go. Okay, so now we're gonna go over to our artboards layer somewhere panel. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna duplicate the artboard three times, right? So it's going on really light green shirts. So we really don't need an underbase for the orange. We really don't need an underbase for the green. And we definitely don't need one for the black. Okay, so now everything is in the same spot. So now we know that it's true. So we're going to turn off the, these boxes, these placement boxes. We're also going to go into our layer and we're going to hide all the registration marks for the time being. Okay. Go over here. So what I like to do is I like to divide everything. Divide. Divide. So now we just got to go in and separate it pretty easy. We're going to make our first one our orange. So we're going to delete. The green. We're going to delete all the black. And if I hide the next art, all the other artboards, I could just select the color, but this is pretty simple. So I just do it this way right now. Come over to this one. Let's go with divide, object, and group. So now we're going to, this next screen is going to be the green. which having this set up on different artboards makes it a little bit more difficult as opposed to being on its own layers. Okay, so we screwed that up, but same thing. Doesn't matter what order it's in, we tell it what to do. We tell it where to go. Object, ungroup. So now we're gonna print the black. So we're gonna delete all the orange and the green. And then one thing we are gonna do with this, so we're gonna take that, we're gonna weld it, and then we are gonna add a half a point stroke to that. And then we go up and when we go up here, we're going to go to expands that stroke, fill stroke. Okay, and then we'll weld them back together. So by doing that is we gave ourselves a half a point wiggle room to line that up into that and that. So now we'll just select this, make sure that that's good to go. Same thing with this, well, that makes sure that's good to go. So now we can turn back on our registration marks. We can actually weld all this together. Well, it's got those stupid little things in there. So we need to go in with just leave it. I don't really got time to do it. So now what we do is we can go in and we can delete these. We don't really want those showing up. We make this black. Doesn't really matter what color black. Same thing with this. 
So now all we got to do, typically I would print straight from here, but we were have issues by doing that. So what we do now is we go into, I don't think I have a file set up for this company yet, but we should just do that just to show you guys how we keep everything organized. So we go to there, file, new folder, edit, rename, So now we have their folder. So now what we do is we're gonna save this as a, as a PDF, which this seems like a extra step to do, but believe me, it does matter. Um, I was printing straight from Illustrator and I was having weird little issues where my chokes weren't coming through. Oh, we're not gonna do that and we're not going to um we weren't having good lineups we weren't having good uh, i don't know how to say it like it just wasn't working out good it was skewing things weird which makes absolutely no sense to me but it was happening so we're going to name this file front shirt seps and then we're gonna save it as a PDF. Save as PDF. Okay, so now when we go to here, so we're in a Acrobat Reader. We're gonna open. So now we have a three page separation, right? Everything is lined up, ready to go. It's in the same spot. So when we go to print, it's going to our GoCo Pro. <clears throat> but we need to click Pages and select the page that we're doing. So let's just say we're going to print page one. Then we got to go down to this printer settings. So we set it up. This is a vector job. So we have presets set up for, you know, 60 LPI, 85 LPI, we gotta set them up for everything, right? So our vector quick frames, that's our settings, print. And now here's the other thing. So we're on the 23 and a half by 31 or something like that frames. So 16 by 4, 0.43 by 24.6 needs to be your artboards or your your page setup basically so your paper size that's what we set up on back on illustrator as our artboard so our paper size that's the size that this frame can print on so we have that selected all that stuff basically it's ready to go we put a frame in and we're going to hit print so now that this is all ready to go, we're gonna go make some screens. Okay, so this is our new and improved screen making room. No, oh, got the tripod up there for now, but so basically we took this table, we screwed these blocks in, and that gives us like a little jig to set it on um, for our application, for our hardeners, for express screen all that stuff without setting the screen itself onto the table um, which helps so we have a hardener we have our water and our express screen like i said this is some extra steps to do but it's what we're doing um, and then we have this table over here that we use to stretch the frames on. So we're gonna fast forward, stretch some frames. Basically, we're going to show you how we found to stretch out the frames. Okay, so most of these kits for these resos come with like six frames. 
we chose to get extras 14 and it really makes our life easier to where we can have more jobs ready to go instead hold on i gotta get this microphone cord out of my way make sure we're able to see what we're doing So we got 14 frames total. So far that's working out. We'll probably order more. So we just loosen all the screws so that we can get the lock channels off. The more you do this, the faster you get, we found. This might take me a little longer because I'm explaining things as we go. I'm like six foot three, and this desk that we're utilizing is a little short. So my back starts hurting being hunched over a lot. So I need to raise this up. So I suggest if you're going to get one of these, you make it on a table that's a good height for you to work on. So that away. And one thing I found is there's always some ink somewhere on the frame. This red stuff that you see on there is actually just the hardener. I'm not really tripping on that. All right, that was pretty funny. Okay. Push all the channels in. We take our mesh. Stretch it over. Make sure it's somewhat centered. Kind of what we want to do is have it centered. Put each of these locks into their channels as centered as possible. Push down, fold down. Push down, fold down. Now that we got both ends done, we can cut a roll of mesh out of the way. Put our side meshes in. So kind of like to just try to pull it, make sure we're straight. Same thing over here. Make sure our corners are pulled in. Okay, so now we're ready to stretch it. Things locked into place. I like to cut this little extra BS out of the way. Not necessary, but what I like to do. Okay. So on our drill, we found that clutch setting eight is good. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the middle on both sides, and then we're gonna do the sides in the middle. And we're going to pull these kind of like halfway, basically, these channels. Boom. And one thing that we found is we don't ever tear the mesh in the middle. We tear it on the sides or the corners. So... That's kind of one thing we found is we want more pressure in the middle. These things are going to bend, and that's all right. You kind of want that. So now that we got all the middles done, we're going to go through, and we're just going to kind of even out the sides to start since we're not fully tensioned out.
That way when we crank down the middles, we're good to go. Okay, so we got them all pretty evened out. We're ready to go. I'm gonna show you right now, best tool that we've ever gotten. So we're only at like 13 and a half Newtons right now. They say you only really need to be at like 11 or 12. I don't know, something like that. I call bullshit. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna crank this fucker down. Clutch kicked in. We're gonna, this first one we're gonna just get Nice and tight. And we're basically, we're going end to end, side to side. Make this down just a little bit. Get, keep some pressure on those ends. We're not cranking down the sides. We're just keeping pressure on them, basically. So. We're cranking the middles. You hear the clutch kick in. Just getting some tension on the sides. Let's check it now. Now we're at 20, which is kind of what we're at. We like it at 20. We got a nice tight screen. Everything is uniform um, as far as tension wise goes. So this screen's ready to go. So we're gonna take it over, we're gonna throw it on. Basically just showing you this process. I don't wanna make all three screens or five screens that I need right now. So we're just doing, we're gonna do this one. There's no reason to repetitive over and over and over and over again. So we're gonna go throw this on the Riso, show you the magic. Okay, so I'm gonna show you something that we found out. When this little dot right here is green, solid, that means there's artwork saved into the machine. And it's gonna print what's saved in there, even though you sent something else to it. There's not a way to delete that artwork that's in there, even though it says like reset, stuff like that, without turning the machine off. So when you screw something up and it jams up or there's an error or something like that, that thing gets saved in there, right? So, cause it never completed it. It never, the print head never made its way down and then made its way back up and finished printing that. Once it finished printing it, it deletes it out and it's ready for the next thing. So that was an issue we were having. We didn't know what the hell was going on. So now that we got it figured out, show you how it's done. Okay. Slap it in there. See how it's got a little bit of a wiggle to it? What we want to do is we want to tighten up this thing. All right, so pull it back, push it in. And both of them never really touch great. You're worried about this center one, right? So you want your screen all the way back, all the way over to your stop over here on this side, right? And that's what puts it into the same space every time when you go to print. So now that that's true, push it in real hard. Lock it down. Now it doesn't wiggle. Okay, good to go. Locked down, ready to go. Remember we had our stuff already set up. 
as far as putting our settings in, our print settings. So we're going to print this out. Sending it over to here. Beep, beep, go. Okay, so now this is gonna print this, this screen out and we're gonna take it over and we're gonna use the Express Magic on it and then we're gonna put the hardener on it. You know, the hardener is expensive, so you really only need to use it where your squeegee and flood bars are gonna be going in my opinion. So one thing that we did find out, right? So on the back side back here, you have these all this alignment stuff. So this little V right here, you can see that right here. That should be the center of your screen. So you need to measure the width and put a mark right in the center to line that up. Um, and it's precise. You'll need to do it on every one. Once you have it set, you have it set. But we were having an issue where it was jamming up, where it would go down and see that little screw on the side of the print head? It would catch on the side of the frame and it would jam itself up. So now we've got it all evened out see if you'll be able to you kind of see the artwork where it burned it once we put the express magic on it it's a lot more visible but then when we put the hardener on as well then we're able to see it better when we go to line it up just about done printing and the good thing is, is it's it's the same time whether it's printing this little left chest print or a full back print, right? The print head just moves at its speed the same every single time. Did we need all three registration marks for left chest? No. Did we put them on there? Yeah, why not? Fuck it. I'm going to tape it up anyways. So now it's done printing for the most part. About to click. Head back. See the little circles moving. Made it all the way to the end. Didn't jam up, didn't hit anything. No sensors, good. Then it kicks back. Okay, so remember I said we made this little jig. It also allows me to like stand it up a little bit. So we got one towel for express magic, one towel for water. So we're gonna wet that up. And what that water does is it deactivates whatever chemical, basically I'm told it's basically a dehazing chemical um, that you would use on like your normal screens. I don't necessarily know if you could just use whatever you would use for dehazing and it would do the job. But All right, wet enough. And then we have a dry one to dry it when we're done. So this is real simple. On the side where the ink would go is where you want to wipe the Express Magic. <coughs> You don't need a lot. And just rub it in. Okay. 
So now you take the wet rag and you're gonna do that on both sides. Basically neutralizing it. What my theory is, is it's because that stuff, if it sits on there, it'll eat away at the coating that the image is actually burned into. You take your dry rag and you just kind of dry it off. See if you can see that better now. Probably not. Take the camera off. Might make it a little easier. So as you can see, see now it's a little bit more prevalent that the color difference, um, which would make it easier to line it up. But we're gonna put the hardener on it right now and show you that. Okay, so as far as putting the hardener on, it's pretty easy. I like to tape up my frame first. This is just for my mess that I make when I'm putting inks and stuff on. It doesn't really need to be perfect. I don't have cool winged flood bars, so I get a lot of ink that comes out to the sides that I got to scrape in and I don't really want to clean that off. Okay, so what this hardener is, is it's some sort of a resin. And it's kind of a cool process. It doesn't really take that long. I'll usually do all the screens at once, but got it in a container it's got a rag in there really just all I did was cut a shirt up you don't need a ton of it and then you just rub it on like I said basically where your squeegee and flood bar are gonna go it's just an extra preventive maintenance save you from having an issue. Some people don't use it, some people use it. I don't give a shit, I'm gonna use it. So then you just take a squeegee. Run it down. Yourself a microfiber. Whip it up. You just rub whatever came through off. That simple. And then you just toss it in front of a fan for a couple minutes and it's dried up, ready to go. So, as you can see, now you can see the artwork really good, your registration marks. So when you go to line something up, it makes your life a lot easier. All right, UPS finally showed up. I don't know about anybody else, but they've been killing me lately, but it's not a huge order. Like I said, it's only 40 shirts. Got it all lined up. Waiting for this damn dryer to warm up. So these, uh. Like everybody knows these like safety colors, 
scorch really easy. So we got to get this dryer dialed in to cure the ink without messing the shirt up. But set it up, took us about 10 minutes in easy setup mode. On the Volt, it's pretty easy. It's simple. Tell it where to go, what to do. We're running the orange. Then we're going to flash it. We're going to skip head three, let it cool down for a second there. Hit the green on print head four, then straight to five for the black. Come around and be done. So like I said, we're trying to get more efficient with this, running more wet on wet. That way we're not doing a bunch of cycles, but came out pretty clean. Still wet, needs to dry, but I mean, we get we get our detail real easy without having to worry about it. Simple. So really at the end of the day, I mean, it's not, not a huge job. There's nothing to write home about. Um, it, it is what it is. We take, we take the, the little jobs and we take the huge jobs. Most of our orders are between a hundred and 500 shirts. So, this GoCo Pro works good for us. Now, if somebody ordered, you know, 5,000 shirts, I'm just going to call my supplier up that I get my inks and stuff from. They pre-burn screens, and I'll probably just order some screens through them, um, pre-burnt with the artwork in it, and offset that cost into the volume of the 5,000 shirt order. I mean, when you got so much to spread it out through, you're adding a penny, half a penny, whatever it is, to the order to cover the, I think they charged me like 70 bucks per screen to get a pre-burnt one. Uh, somebody's ordering 5,000 shirts, they're probably in the one, two, maybe three color range. You know, I don't know. If they're ordering 5,000 simulated process shirts, then we'll figure it out. But, you know, here's what it is. It's time to get to work. sucks with small jobs is we printed the fronts now i gotta break this one down at least i'll probably break that one down that one's ready to go already just break down this orange real quick slap a kelly green on it we need a black on that head
laugh at me. We are using effing ink on this one. At least for these big patches of green, just because they're safety green shirts. And uh, I don't want to have to cook the shirts too hot to get them to cure. Okay, so we don't have the tri-lock system, which if we had it, screens go into the perfect place every time. What we did do was we set up a screen with our registration marks right in the center based off of our template like we showed you earlier. So what we did was this, this head we, had a, we screwed up on lining up some artwork. Um, so basically where we put a left chest print. So we had to move it over a bunch. So what we did though, is we loosen this side. And the theory behind this is this side right here is your stationary lockdown. That's you lock it down and then you move your micros. So what we figured is if we had this clamp basically centered to where our registration marks, we made a center mark on the palette itself. Um, let's show you right over here. Damn safety bars open. Okay, so we have a, a center line down our uh, palette. So what we did was as long as our center registration marks went down that center, then on every single head, we went down every single one and then we marked them with the tape, see? Then in theory, we should be very close on registration. Granted, we're not gonna be perfect because there's, you know, maybe our micros weren't centered exactly like we thought they were when we did it all, but in theory, this should be perfect. So then we just have to clamp it down, clamp down the screen, and then maybe little micro adjustments and things like that. So right now you can see our micros are way off. So we got to zero these all back out. And maybe this is like, common knowledge or, you know, whatever. It's just something that we came up with to work. Maybe everybody does this. Maybe nobody does this. I don't know. Okay, so we got those all zeroed in. So basically, we're going to move that palette over here. We're going to slap this screen in, and our center lines should go pretty damn close. X for right. That's right. Here our screen over here. Oh, one more. There it is. Okay, so we're gonna go grab our screen, toss it in, show you what we're talking about. And since we did, we moved that one out, we moved this one out as well. So we're going to have to loosen this. Move that out. So we'll slide that in. Put our table up. that thing out of the way so you can see our registration marks are pretty much right on that line so we could clamp that down and it shifts over so that's something I haven't figured out 
if you watch it and see if I can zoom in and get a good clear clear shot of it when I clamp it down it moves over quite a bit so that's our that's our micros that we got to move on that but we're gonna print our green and then we're gonna line up everything to that so it's not really a big deal Right, let's hit it with a test print, table down. We've got two strokes, 30-30, shirts there, test. Hit it with a clean, and we didn't quite clear, so we've got to... Down a little bit. Clean. We're just gonna do one. There we go, now we cleared the screen. Kind of. Actually gonna flip this around. We seem to have something. Squeegee's doing something weird. It's leaving a streak. There we go. Clean, looks good. Time to run it. Actually, time to tape up. On to the backs. Whoa, shit. Almost died. Fuck. Woo. Forgot to take it off manual mode. Just like that, 50 shirts printed. So as you can see, it's super easy to use once you figure it out. Uh, big shout out to the homie Jay over at Express Greens. Got us dialed in, he explained some simple things to us that once we learned what was going on and what we needed to do, 
then everything just kind of fell in place and kind of made sense. Like we've all been using computers and printing films for years. It's similar, but it's different, right? We're still using a printer, but it's different in the fact of how it's printing, right? So it's got its own RIP software into it. It holds and stores the memory and blah, 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 blah. All these different things. Now that we've figured that out and learned what's going on, it's pretty basic and simple. We have to just tell the printer what we're doing, what we want it to do, and it does it. Um, little little things they got to dial in, you know? The Express Magic helps a lot. Um, the thermal paper, which I didn't really show because we don't really use it too often. It's just when we got something crazy, we want to make sure that we're doing it proper, that our like halftone dots are going to look right and things like that. We'll print that out. But as far as needing to do that every single time, that's kind of a waste. But And as you can see, when we go to line them up, they line up really easy. I mean, granted, this is a easy job that we lined up. Like the backs didn't have any butt registrations. The fronts did. Everything lined up really easy, but I mean, it's still, it's still just a simple, easy little job. So that's not really like a good showcase on what it could do, you know, and I, I don't take that, you know, don't, don't call me out for picking an easy job to make this video on. It's just, I had something to print and we made this video. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out. If you have, um, any concerns or you're thinking about getting one and you want to talk to me over the phone or something like that, give me a call. Uh, go on our website. It's got our number, www.frdmprints.com. And I'm sure I'll put a link on it too. But shoot us an email, comment, whatever. Hit like, hit subscribe. It helps us just kind of grow and reach more people. And hopefully we can make more videos highlighting things that you might want to see. So if you like having money, if you like having fun, hit like, hit subscribe. Peace.